Namaste Masters. I extend a warm welcome to all the viewers of PMC Global Channel who are watching this wisdom sharing session of the untold story of Sita. We have so far finished 15 episodes of this wisdom sharing. Today, we are about to start the 16th episode, which will be the final episode of this wisdom sharing series. Before we continue with our 16th episode, I'd like you to join with me on meditation for just a couple of minutes. My dear masters, cross your feet, lock your fingers, gently close your eyes and be with your breath. Be with your breath, my dear masters. Connect your inner stillness through your breath. Try to connect to your consciousness and invite the energy of Sita Mata and Lord Hanuman onto our platform to accompany us on the journey of this 16th and final episode of this wisdom sharing series. Slowly rub both your palms together and place them on your closed eyes. Gently remove your palms and open your eyes slowly. Welcome masters. As we start our 16th episode, if you remember the last episode towards the end, Ansuya bids goodbye to Soma and comes back to the hermitage where her mother is waiting for her. And now Ansuya and her mother are on their way back to Ayodhya where Ansuya's father is there. After they have been for several hours on the road, because it's a long travel, they decide to take a break in between. So on the way, both mother and daughter haven't talked much because they are so overwhelmed with the story that Soma had shared with them about Sitama. As Anasuya sits under a tree resting, her mind drifts off. My dear friends, for the last few episodes, the story which we were hearing about Sita, Sita Mata was through Soma. Now that Anasuya has left Soma's hut, whatever we will be hearing now is from Anasuya. As you remember, the part one was the story of Meenakshi and part two is the story of the next birth of Meenakshi, which is on Suya. And after finishing Soma, Soma's story, now Anasuya is going back to Ayodhya. So as she sits under the tree, her mind drifts off. And while she's thinking about her time with Soma, suddenly a memory just pops in her mind and in that memory, she sees herself standing in front of Sri Rama when she was a young child. All she remembers is Sri Rama smiling at her with very kind eyes. And she tries to remember more, but she cannot. All she can recall is his loving eyes and the smile. After meeting Soma and hearing her stories, suddenly this memory of Sri Rama becomes very personal to Anasuya. She remembers very clearly, Sri Ram taking her young face between his hands and staring into her eyes. She also remembers Sri Ram saying something to her. A bond had been formed. She's trying to hold on this memory 
but she cannot remember what Sri Ram said to her when she was young. So she asks her mother. Her mother says, of course I remember that day. But when Anasuya asks her to tell her what Sri Ram spoke to her that day, her mother doesn't speak. And she says, you should ask this question to your father, not me. And Suya is quite upset and she says, don't I have the right to know what Sri Ram Maharaj said about me? And then after a while of contemplation, and Suya's ma, ma says, yes, I will let you know what happened that day. And the story goes, and Suya's mom says, I was standing in the doorway while Sri Ram was discussing some administrative matter with your father. It was the first time he had come to our house. So it was a great honor for us. It was the custom of Maharaj Sri Ram to go to people's house and find how they were. And especially because Anusuya's father worked in his administration, he very lovingly came to their house to discuss some matters with their father. And that moment Anusuya's mom could not restrain herself and wanted to look at Maharaja from close quarters. So she stood at the doorway in the room with where her husband and Maharaja were discussing some serious matters. Because Anusuya was little and was very curious, she too came and stood beside her mother, holding on to her leg, half hiding her face within the folds of her mother's clothing. And suddenly Sri Ram noticed her and in a very, very sweet voice, asked her to come forward. Anusuya's mom is telling all this to Anusuya and she says, my heart pounded at the thought that I could approach him. But then Anusuya's mom took little Anusuya close to Sri Rama. And Anusuya's father introduced mother and Anusuya to Sri Ram. And as the father was introducing Anusuya to Sri Ram, he said, Anusuya is our youngest child and the only daughter. And he also told Sri Ram that whenever we pass the palace, when Anusuya was very young, she would point to the palace and say, call out Mata. One time she even escaped our arms and ran into the palace because she wanted to say, see Mata. And then we had to hold her and bring her back. Then Anusuya's father told Sri Rama these things. He held Anusuya's face, looked deeply into her eyes. His smile broadened and he said, she was one of the servants who came with Sita from Mithila, but she didn't live to see our return. And then after some time, he also added, she loved Sita very much. Then he turned towards Anusuya's father and said, you must send her to the Gurukulam, which is the school now established for young girls. Sita would want to see that. And after some time, he turned towards Anasuya and he said, I will give you a blessing child. And he placed his hand upon her head and he closed his eyes and said, there will always be someone to bring you back, to remind you of where you came from in all of your future lives. And this is what took place that day, said Anasuya's mom to Anasuya. And Anasuya got very upset. She said, why didn't you tell me before? And Anasuya's mom said, your father didn't want you to know that you were a servant in your previous life. My dear friends, it's good to know here that Anasuya's father held a good position in the administration of Sri Ram's palace. And because he was placed in a good position, he didn't want Ansuya to feel that she, have, she was a servant once upon a time. That was one of the reasons why they hid all this conversation from Ansuya. And now Ansuya asks her mother, is there anything nobler or better than serving our Maharani or Maharaja? And she said, nothing can make me happier than to know our Mahara, that our Maharani Sita Mata had once been my Mata, just as she was Mata to Soma. And she says to mom, her mother, mom, had I known this, I could have asked Soma about my past. I could have asked so many questions. And she starts crying and she's very cross with her parents for not telling her before. And now she thinks it's a missed opportunity because she never had an opportunity to ask about this to Soma. Then her mother says, I'm ashamed to say what I just told you, but this is how your father felt and he still feels the same. Don't cry, Anasuya. We'll definitely go back to visit Soma, I promise you. But then her mother requests her, let's not share this conversation with your father. So they never mentioned this to their father when once they go back to Ayodhya. But 
Anasuya could never forgive her father for not telling her before. The days passed by and this incident kind of slipped from people's mind. Anasuya continued with her household duties. She was physically engaged, but she was mentally absent because she was always living with Soma and Sitama mentally. One day her father told her that she was soon to meet her future husband. And one day after Ansuya finished her work, she wants to go to Saryu Nadi, Saryu River. She goes to Saryu River, sits on the bank of it under one tree, and she's lost in her thought. And suddenly she's become aware that someone else is sitting next to her. When she turns her head, she sees a young, she sees a young man sitting under a tree very close to her. And when the young man sees Ansuya looking at him, he says, he introduces himself and says, I am Ajit and I'm assuming you're Anasuya. I went to your home to meet you, but I was told that you were here by the river. So I came here looking for you. And with that, Anasuya understood that this was the young man she was destined to marry. And then he takes Anasuya's permission and he says, may I join you? And he also tells her that this is his favorite spot too. This is where he often came to reflect, to sit with the river and after that, Anasuya does not know how to start a conversation or how to engage with this young man. He was a good looking young man, nothing extraordinary, but he looked a very kind man. And as Anasuya was thinking this way, suddenly she notices that there is a furry animal close to the river, seems to be struggling. And suddenly she hears Ajit saying, oh, that animal might be hurt, I must go to it. And then he runs to the animal, picks it with so much love and brings it back to the place where Anasuya is sitting, examines the animal and says, a large bird seems to have attacked his leg, but the animal should be all right. And then suddenly he removed a silver pendant that was hung around his neck and he placed it on the animal's leg where he was hurt, whispering, Mata's love will heal you. After some time, as if Mata's love had already healed the animal, the animal squirmed in an attempt to free itself and ran away. And Ajit very lovingly let her go and said, there now you may go on your way and be happy. And meanwhile, Anasuya looks at that pendant and she says, where did you get it? And then Ajit said that his grandmother gave it to him before she died. And her grandmother thought it had healing power Anasuya asks, how did your grandmother get this pendant? And Ajit says, it's a long story. So Anasuya insists, Ajit, that she would like to hear the story. Then Ajit says, you may not believe, but it was given to, given to her by Maharani herself. When she returned from the exile, she said that her mother had given it to her when she left Mithila. That means Sunainama had given it to Sitama when she left Mithila. Anasuya could not believe at these words. And now she knows. And she says that was, that was Mata Sita's pendant. And Ajit says, oh, so you two call her Mata like my grandmother. And, my, and he says, my grandmother had so much love for her. And then he tells the long story. He says, when Raja Ram and Rajkumari Sita first came into Ayodhya after getting married, and when her, his grandmother looked at them, to, her grand, to his grandmother, Rajkumari Sita did not look like a normal princess. There was a light emanating from her and her grandmother thought that Sri Ram has married a, a goddess. It's not an ordinary princess. And when Raja Ram and Sita went on exile, she used to go to Saryu River offering her prayers and chant and seeing her, all the women in Ayodhya used to join her and they all prayed for the safety of Sitama in Lanka. And then Anasuya exclaims because she has heard this story from Soma. So she says, oh, so that was your grandmother. And Ajit says, do you know about my grandmother? And then she requests Ajit to continue the story. And Ajit says, throughout the 14 years, my grandmother, whether it rained or thundered, or if she was sick or she was happy, she would not miss one day. She would go every day to the river to offer her prayers. She was a very pure soul. Though her husband was quite well off, she gave up all her luxuries and she wanted to live a very simple life 
because she said Sita Ma in the exile was living a very simple life because of her great devotion for Sita Ma, the way she prayed next to Saryu River. Soon other women joined her and by the end there were many who came, the women of Ayodhya, who were praying for the safety of Sita Ma. And then he says, my grandmother had a great influence on me. Even though she died when I was quite young, I remember her well. She, had, she did great deeds. She spoke a little, but her life was an example for me, says Ajit. And then Anusuya asks, can you tell me how your grandmother got this pendant? And the story that we have known of through Soma is again validated by Ajit. And Ajit tells, tells her how his grandmother fell sick one time and his father got the medicinal roots with the help of Sita Mata. And when, her, when his grandmother got better, she tried to meet Sita Ma, but the guards wouldn't let her, knowing that Sita Ma herself came to her grandmother's house in disguise and tried to see his grandmother herself. And when she saw her grand, his grandmother, she immediately recognized that this was the woman who was praying all night and day, the 14 years, and whose prayers had protected her during her captivity in Lanka. And then Ajit says, Sita Mata, to show her appreciation, she took off the pendant from her neck and placed it around my grandmother's neck. And he says, it was the most precious thing that Sita Mata owned, but she said, there was no way to express gratitude for the service my grandmother had rendered. And he says to Anasuya, you can imagine what this meant to my grandmother who never wanted any recognition for anything she did. And then Rajkumari Sita told my grandmother that she didn't know how great effects her prayers were. And now Anasuya understands the whole puzzle. Then Ajit says, my mother died when I was young. So my grandmother brought me up and I lived with my grandmother till she died. And before she died, she gave me this pendant because she said this is how Sita Mata wanted her, wanted my grandmother to give the pendant to her grandson. And Ansuya could not believe what she was hearing because she had heard all this story from Soma. And now it was so amazing to meet the grandson of Abhita about whom Soma had told the story in such great detail. And now she also recognizes that this is the same man who was Kiran in the previous life in Mithila, who was looking after the animals in the palace. And Sita Mata had a great regard for this man when he was in Mithila. So she asks him, you like animals, don't you? And his face starts beaming. And he says, oh, that's an understatement. I would spend all my time with animals caring for them. But my father has other intentions for me. And so Ansuya asks, what intention does his father has? And he tells that my father wants me to go into the administration in the palace. And it's not what I want, but because my father wants, I will do it. And then Ansuya says, don't be upset. Whatever is better for you will happen. And that way, with the stories of Sita Ma, Ansuya is drawn to Ajit and they become good friends within no time. And Ajit says it's getting dark and we should be back home. But Ansuya is so fond of Sita Mata's story. So he says to Ajit, can I have one more story before we go back? Then he says, I will tell you the story that my father shared because my father used to work or he still works in the administration of Sri Ram. So one day when the court was on, Sri Ram was holding the court in the royal palace. They were talking about having the school for girls and majority in that courtroom were against opening up something against the tradition. At that time, Sita Mata, along with a lot of rishis and yogis, walked into the court and Sri Ram said that Sita Mata would love to see this Gurukul open for girls. Gurukul is nothing but uh, education system or a school. So till then there were no schools for girls and Sita Mata wanted to start that in Ayodhya. 
So she requested the yogis who came with her to give their opinion and receive a sista said that his wife, Arundhati, if she was not fully educated in sacred texts, text, she would not have received the gift of Kamadhenu who could feed, feed so many people in time of need. And he said, if my daughters were not educated, they could not have created the beautiful world they formed with their mother when their mother was in despair at the loss of their sons. And then Sage Atri spoke that if his wife, Anasuya, was not educated in the sacred text, she could have never gained entrance into the celestial world and seen the Mandakini River, which she brought to the earth. At that moment, Sage Agasya said that his wife Lopa Mudra, if she was not educated in the sacred test, she could not have held the Rakshasas at bay, who would have ruled the forest in the south, threatening every hermitage. And they all said it was so important for their, for their wives to be educated. And so every girl should be educated. And then Sri Rama spoke saying, if his wife Sita was not educated in the sacred text, perhaps, perhaps she would not be able to withstand the torments of Ravana during her time in Lanka. And then with all these opinions, then the Maharani, he says, Sita Mata then spoke and she said, the wives of these great rishis, they offered me the fruit of their tapasya, tapasya that was so intense as any male sage could perform. And their tapasya is what sustained me. And the women of Ayodhya, the mothers who are the strength of the society. He said, she said, our future mothers, mothers must receive an education for the sake of the whole community. And she also added that Ayodhya was growing so rapidly and unless the women could keep up with the changes, the kingdom would not be able to advance. When she was done, no one had the, had the voice to oppose her. And he said, that's how the Gurukulam for girls started and Anasuya remembered and said, yes, I went to that Gurukulam when I was a child, but she didn't tell uh, Ajit that she, she left the school halfway. So, and then she said to him, I'm so grateful that you have shared all these stories about Sitama. And now I almost feel I know your grandmother personally. And with that, after telling each other the stories of Sitama, they felt so close. They felt as if they knew each other for so long. Though Ansuya knew this was Kiran in the last life, she did not share with him that. And while she was talking to Ajit, she mentioned about Soma and how they had spent the last few days with Soma in the ashram. Ajit could not believe that she was still alive and expressed his interest that he would like to go and see. Then Anasuya said, don't worry, we will take you. I'll speak to my father about it. So when they come, came home, she requested her father that, can we go to Soma? Can we meet Soma? At that moment, her father said, so can I assume that you like Ajit and you're happy with going ahead with the marriage? Anasuya, by the time, was so comfortable with Ajit, she could not say no. And then she mentioned that about Ajit's grandmother, and he said, and she said, I know about that noble lady so well, who did so much for our Sita Mata. And her father, Ansuya's father, said that that is true. Um, though they had so much riches, Ajit's grandmother gave away everything and chose to live in simplicity. And then, her father said, while the Maharani was abstaining from food during her time in Lanka, Ajit's grandmother was feeding many people in Ayodhya. She said that by feeding them, she was providing sustenance for the Maharani. The love she displayed helped to protect not only the Maharaja and Maharani, it also helped to protect Ayodhya. There were many times where kingdom was threatened during the 14 years. And of course, it was Maharaja's brother and the army who protected everyone in Ayodhya. But we also know it was also the prayers of this woman who did so much of penance at Saryu River. So then Ansuya asked, is this why you're marrying 
me to Ajit. Then her father said, no, actually it was our Sri Ram Maharaj who put this thought in my mind when you were very young. And Amsuya could not believe it. And then her father said, yes, when he came to visit our home one day, this was towards the end of his life, he came to our house. You may not remember Ansuya. Ansuya remembered it quite well because she had discussed with her mother. And then her father continued. Before Sri Ram took his leave, he casually remarked that her father should consider the youngest son of Sudama, who is Ajit, as a suitable husband for Ansuya. Though Sri Ram said it very casually, he always instructed people, suggested people. That was the way he always taught people not to push anyone. Everyone were to draw their own conclusion. And some years later, his words returned back to his father. And Ansuya's father spoke to Sudama, who was also working in the administration. And as soon as Ansuya's father mentioned this to Ajit's father, Sudama, he told Ansuya's father, that Sri Ram had suggested the very idea to him as well many years ago. And listening to this, Anusuya's father was very much surprised that Sri Ram told both the people about their children to get married. And so this is how the whole um, concept of Anusuya marrying to Ajit actually came into picture. So they all wanted to they all wanted to go and meet Soma along with Ajit and her father. Every time they would plan, something else would come up in their father's schedule and they had to keep postponing and that got delayed week after week. He set another date, that also got uh, delayed. And then Ansuya started getting very impatient and she said to her mother, we should go without my father because Ajit also wants to see Soma. And then he set another date, but this time there was no delay. And all four of them went to the hermitage um, where Soma resided. So it, it was late the next day when they arrived at the hermitage, Ansuya's father wanted to pay his respects to the guru of the ashram. So while he went there, so Ansuya could not wait any longer. So along with Ajit and her mother, she rushed into the forest to reach Soma's hut. So as they entered the forest path that led to the Soma's hut, they encountered a, a yogi walking from the opposite direction, leaving the area where Soma lived. He, the yogi looked at them, stopped and said, are you looking for Soma? You won't find her there. Ansuya's mom asked him, where is she? He smiled. But then Ansuya's mom asked again. Then he replied softly, she has gone home. Ansuya's mom said, home? You mean Mithila? But she's too old to travel to Mithila at this age. The yogi said, no lady, her true home. And seeing the perplexed look on all these faces, he said, the yogi continued, it was a few days back when I heard Mata's voice calling me to hurry to Soma. I was far away from there, but I came as fast as I could. As I entered the forest, I saw two beautiful women approaching me. They were lavishly dressed, and I thought it was very odd to find two women dressed this way in the forest, but I was in such a hurry to meet Soma that I didn't take any note of it. They stopped when they reached me, and the woman who was leading the other one smiled and said, Putra, you won't find Soma there. I have already taken her. Putra meaning son. And then the yogi continued. I pranamed to the woman, not realizing what I had heard. I continued to hurry towards Soma's hut in great haste. I had not gone far when, I, when it suddenly hit me. That was Mata who had spoken to me. It was Mata and Soma I had seen. I turned and ran back to where they had been but there was no sign of them. In their place, I found Soma's aged body lying on the ground with no life in it. Tears came into his eyes as he spoke and he told the story to Anasuya's mom. But he continued, I did not recognize our Mata. And then his face brightened and he added, she did not want me to recognize her for I would have fallen at her feet and begged her to take me as well. But it is the will of Sri Ram and Mata that I remain to remind the world of the love that is their very being and to serve all in their name. And with those words and with the pranam, the yogi hurried off into the forest. 
Anasuya's mother froze. She was not able to say anything. She burst into tears when she realized that Soma had died. When Anasuya's mother could speak, she returned to Ajit and said, go after that yogi, find him, find him if you can, quickly. With that, she sank to the ground. Anasuya asked her, what is it, ma? Then Anasuya's mom said, don't you realize the great blessing we just had? Anasuya did not understand. All she could think was that she has lost Soma, Soma has died. So beyond that, she couldn't think of anything. And then Anasuya's mom said, let's see if Ajit can find that yogi. But Ajit came back saying he could not find the yogi. Anasuya's mom said, he was the one who came that last night to Soma and brought fruit, fruit, fruit for all of us. Don't you remember him, Anasuya? And then Anasuya nodded and she said, but that yogi that day, he was so tall. He could barely fit in the doorway. This one is so small. I don't think, mom, they are the same one. You're confused. And then Anasuya's mom said, he was the same. His size changes. I saw it that night and again today. I recognize him by the glow that emanates from his body. It's the most unusual glow. That glow lit up the room that night and it lit up the room today as we were talking. And that brilliance is brilliant than Surya Dev, which is the sun. And she asked Anasuya and Ajit, do you know who that was? And they both shook their head because they really did not know what their mom was talking about. And then the mother said, I believe that was Hanuman. It is said that he comes in many forms, always changing so that people will recognize him only by the love he spreads, not by any one body. Did you feel the wave of love that spread over us as he hurried away? That is the sign of his presence. And Suya's mother wiped the tears because she couldn't stop crying. And she said, Sri Ram and Sita Ma gave you a great, great, great gift today, Ansuya. It was Soma's time, time to go. And we should rejoice with her. We should not cry that she has died. Whatever questions you had for her, I know you had a lot of questions for her, but they were meant to go unanswered instead of seeing Soma. They gave you darshan of Hanuman. Sita Ma and Sri Ram gave this to you both, Anasuya and Ajit, perhaps as a wedding gift. Take the love that he has spread over us and let it grow in your hearts. Ajit was so deeply touched by what he heard, but Anasuya could not stop crying. She rushed to the hut, though she knew Soma won't be there, but she could only find peace after reaching Soma's hut. And then she started crying and saying, Soma, I only just found you and now you're gone. I was hoping you could help me remember, to remember just one moment when I was with Sitama. And she kept on crying. A short time later, Ajit joined her. She, he could understand the pain she was going through. And he said, she means a lot to you. I can understand that. And Anasuya said, I can't explain my feelings. She told me something about my past, but I wanted to learn more. And then just to make her feel a bit more blessed and a bit more joyful, trying to make her forget the loss of Soma, Ajit says, did I tell you the story about Sri Ram when he came to our house and blessed at me? And the moment Amsuya heard the mention of Maharaj Sri Ram, she forgot all her sorrow and she looked at him and said, he blessed you? And then Ajit started another beautiful story and he said, towards the end of his stay on earth, Sri Ram used to visit many homes and meet the children of the future generation. And one day he came to our house. He came to see my father and he wanted to meet all the children. We were three boys. My father presented us. And as he looked at us, he took me aside, looked at me. And then he said to my father, he said, this child of yours must go into administration. He will look after the forest. He has great love for animals and I trust he will care for their welfare. And Sita would be happy about that. This is exactly what he said to Ansuya mom too, that, you know, send her to Gurukulam and Sita would be happy about that. So, and then he says, I don't remember those words, but my father has told me this story so many times. 
because he wanted this to be etched into my memory forever. I don't remember much about Maharaja as this was the only time I met him. But Ajit says, I do remember his eyes. They were unlike any eyes I have seen. They were full of love and those eyes blessed me that day. And he said to me, the animals will always befriend you. Never have any fear of them. And turning to my father, he told me that he and Rajkumari Sita were traveling through the forest during the exile. And Rajkumari Sita was never fearful of any animals. And the animals often guided her where they wanted to go. And after this, and then Ajit continued his story and said, my father used to take me frequently to the forest so that I would gain a love for all the wild animals. As Anasuya was listening to the story, Ajit's words soothed her sorrow. And it was so happy to hear what she was hearing from Ajit. And then she said, I think I was not meant to meet Soma again. And this is what Anasuya thought, that I was not meant to meet her. That's why she died. Then she says, perhaps she told me everything I needed to know. And perhaps it's better not to go into the past. Because friends, as you know, one of her main reason for this visit was to find more about her past. Now that she knows, Sri Ram had told her father that she was a servant and Sitama in Mithila. So she wanted to ask more, but now she understood she was never meant to know more about the past. And she said to Ajit, and then Ajit said, Anasuya, the past has given us the present. Whatever knowledge we gain in the past is somewhere locked in our memory. We should only look ahead of us. I believe that is what Sri Ram was doing when he visited our homes. He was sowing seeds for the future. What is to come will be his creation, his and Sita Ma's. So that soothed Anasuya and they both came back home. After some time, they happily got married. And Ansuya lived many, many happy years with her husband in Ayodhya. They had four daughters, no son. And every time she had a daughter, Ansuya and Ajit would take her to the sacred Saryu River and show the newborn daughter to the river and say, Saryu Devi, see Sita's daughter, bless this child that she may serve her mata. And as the years passed by, Ansuya is telling us this story that she watched the kingdom grow and flourish under the guidance of Maharaja Love and Kush now that Sri Ram was no longer there. Ajit spent much of his time traveling the forest, traveling the forest of the kingdom, making sure that the expansion of human settlements was not encroaching in the territories of the animal kingdom. Most of the time, he would spend looking after the welfare of the animals. Years later, one day, Anasuya, along with Ajit, goes to Saryu River. And by now, they were both in their middle years. And then Anasuya says to Ajit, do you remember after we first met, we went to see Soma and we could not find her because she was dead? And Ajit says, how can I forget that day? That was the day when a bond has formed, we had formed between us when we, we were seated there in Soma's heart. How can I forget that day? Ansuya says, the last words of Soma spoke to me were about our past. And Ajit asks, what about our past? You mean about my past too? And Ansuya nods and she says, Soma told me that I had been a servant in the household of Maharaja Janaka and came with Mata from Mithila after her marriage. She also told me that you had also served in the household caring for the animals in, with the name Kiran and that Mata was very fond of you because of your love for all the creatures. And then Ajit is so surprised and he says, he asks her, asks her to tell more and then she says, then Soma told me that when we were young serving in that household, you had wanted to marry me. But my father forbid it. He insisted that I should never get married. So I never got married in that life. Because of that, I was able to follow Mata to Ayodhya. And then Soma told me that you and I should marry because it was Mata's desire. Ajit could not believe that Ansuya is telling him after all these years. So he says, you're telling me after all these years? And then Ansuya didn't know why she had never shared this before. 
But then she says to Ajit, did you not tell me that day that we should only look in the future, not in the past? And that's what I have done, Ajit. I'm so very grateful that Mata and Sri Ram brought us together in this life. I think they arranged so much more than we know. Ajit's shock turned to joy and he said, thank you, Anasuya, for sharing this now. It gives me great happiness and peace to know that I served in Mithila and was known to Mata. But aren't we all known to her? Every being on earth? I think we cannot even imagine all that they have done and they're still doing beyond their physical forms. And Ajit says, someone, actually Anasuya says, someone once told me that Mata and Sri Ram would be even more active, more effective once they go beyond their physical form. They will be able to do more. And she remembers that she had heard that from Soma years passed by. Anasuya's daughter has got married and subsequently Ajit left his physical form. Anasuya turned quite old and for the last time she made her way down to the sacred Saryu river which was very crowded those days now. Slowly markets were springing up. It was not the same Saryu river when she had come to Ayodhya with Mata. There was a lot of development. She found a tree, some quiet space, and sat under a tree. She was in her old age now. Leaning back against a tree, Anasuya is saying, I watched the river for a few moments and then closed my eyes and let my mind wander. These are the words of Anasuya as she rests against a tree. I watch the river for a few moments and then close my eyes and let my mind wander. The words that Mata Sita had spoken to me that night, I slept in Soma's hut, returned. She had asked if I wanted to help to create the new society. And now Anasuya is thinking, Mata asked me if I could help her. So Anasuya silently asked her, but what have I done, Mata? I have only loved you. I've done nothing more. Thinking in this way, she drifted off. The darkness melted and a scene appeared before Ansuya's closed eyes. In that scene, she saw a woman struggling in the river, fighting for life as the river engulfed her and washed her further and further away from the shore. The woman felt the water pulling and Ansuya could see herself in the woman. So Ansuya says, I felt the water pulling as if it were I who was gasping for breath. As I was about to go under, I saw a very stately and dignified man staring out at me from the river's edge. He seemed to be commanding the waves to release me and they obeyed. The waves drew me closer to the shore until a final wave deposited me onto the sandy bank. The man lifted my shaking body and I looked up at him. I felt such care and love emanating from him. And suddenly my vision changed. Now Ansuya is looking at another vision. The women and a few other women servants are all standing by the side of a chariot. They have a sad expression as if they are preparing to leave the only home they had ever known. The same man who rescued me at the drowning river now came up, embraced us all and he's saying, you too are my daughters. And as he's saying that, there she appeared, Rajkumari Sita, youthful and ever so beautiful, dressed in her royal garments. Such joy flowed from her and her beaming smile chased away any sadness the women felt. And at that moment, Anasuya awoke with a start from her vision. And she murmured, that was me, that was me. The woman drowning in the water, that was me. And the woman servant who was taking leave from the Maharaja, that was me. And then she remembered that the man who was trying to protect her from the river was none other than Janak Baba. And the man who was standing next to chariot saying to all of them, you are my daughters is again Janak Baba. Wanting to return to the scene back, she had seen the seen her previous life, she had seen her life with Janak Baba and Sitama. 
So Anusuya desperately wanted to return back to the scene to see that life once again. She closed her eyes, but nothing more revealed itself before her inner sight. But a realization came to Anusuya that Mata had fulfilled her last desire to recall a memory of Mithila. Thank you, Mata, Anusuya said. I will remember this always, the one desire I had to recall my memory of Mithila, for which I went all the way to Soma, but I, Soma was gone by the time. Thank you for fulfilling my desire. And then Anasuya's mind drifted off. How have I helped to build your society, Mata? I have done nothing. All I did was love my husband, love my children, and I tried to help those in the need. And then Anasuya heard a response. In that she heard, all I have ever asked of you is love, Anasuya. All I have ever asked of you is to love. That is how we create the new society, one based on love. His love, my love. As Anasuya hears these words, these words slowly faded into the background as she began to hear the quiet moment of her breath in and out. She heard the gentle lapping of the waves rising up, sinking down. Her breath seemed to synchronize with the water as she listened to the gentle sounds coming from within and without, like a humming, ever so slight, until she could no longer distinguish between the rise of her breath and the rise of the waves. Then she asked herself, am I my, am I my breath? or the waves, or my breath and the waves are one. And with that, the sound became even more distant, even fainter, and Anasuya continued to listen. In and out came her breath. In and out came the waves, smaller and less discernible and less frequent, until there was no more sound and no more breath. And our dear Anasuya completed one more incarnation and left her body. One more life falls away, but all that was learned, all that was loved continues, helping to frame and guide the new life that is to emerge. And Dena Madam says, I look behind and see a long, long trail of lives stretching back to beyond what the mind can conceive. I look ahead and see how many more imprints need to fulfill themselves. Flickers of light on the great ocean of being. What an amazing book. What an amazing wisdom sharing series. My dear friends, with great sadness, I conclude the wisdom sharing session or the wisdom sharing series of the untold story of Sita. I'm sad because this is the last episode, but I am extremely happy that this universe gave me the opportunity to be the one to bring the wisdom out of this great book to all my viewers. I had the great opportunity to wisdom share this book in three languages. Every day in the last eight weeks, I have done six wisdom sharing session every week. I find myself to be the most fortunate being on this universe to have been given this opportunity. I thank Brahmashri Pitamaha Subhash Patriji for having given me this opportunity and a platform. I thank Dina Maria Madam for giving such a great jewel of a book. I thank the PMC Global Channel for having given me the platform to do this amazing 16 episodes of wisdom sharing sessions with you. Last but not the least, I thank all you viewers for your amazing feedback and your support in my journey through, the, through this last eight weeks 
of this wisdom sharing sessions of the untold story of Sita. Thank you very much. <laughs>